Because I know that you love me And your love never fails The wind is strong and the water's deep, but I'm not alone here in these open seas. Your love never fails. The chasm was far too wide. I never thought I'd reach the other side. Your love never fails. You stay the same. You stay the same through the ages. Your love never changes. There may be pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning. And when the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid because I know that you love me. Spirit, you would meet us here. We would hear the word and we would live the word and we would be bold and brave to come to your throne of grace. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Go ahead and take a minute and greet one another. If you have your Bibles with you, please open to the book of Proverbs, and we are going to be in the 17th chapter tonight. Um, as I spent the day preparing for this evening, I came to the 22nd verse, and it was as, as if the Lord just stopped everything and pointed at that and said, that is the one that I want you to focus on tonight. Um, I typically would like to get through the entire chapter, but I believe the Holy Spirit has something here for somebody here that really needs to hear. How many times can I say that in one sentence? Proverbs 17, 22. 
It says, a merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bone. Anybody here with a merry heart tonight? A couple of you, good. And let them sing songs and laugh and rejoice. And if anybody be here with a broken spirit, not going to admit it. Okay. Then this is going to, shall we say, moisten the bone. Because a broken spirit dries the bones. Father, we come to your word tonight and pray that it indeed would do exactly what you say it will do. Your word is a lamp to our feet. It's a light to our path. It is instructions and ways of righteousness. It is full of precepts and principles and promises. So that the child of God can navigate this life not only skillfully, but joyfully, Lord, joyfully. So give us insight to living this evening as we read and study this psalm. And Father, open the floodgates of prayer. This evening as we get ready to engage the throne of grace, to speak to you, may you pour out your Holy Spirit upon us. May you, Father, cause your children here gathered in this room to cry out to you. And may you meet them here tonight. And I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You've heard the expression that laughter is the best medicine. Yeah? Um, I think it's based on this proverb right here. Now, some of you know that I uh, work as a stand-up comedian in the mornings, driving a bus of load full of junior high kids. Uh, actually, I'm a bus driver, but I pretend to be a, a stand-up comedian to them. Um, and I tell them things like, um, you know, Adam and Eve were the first ones to ignore the apple terms of conditions, <laughs> right? And then, of course, you know, they struggle in school. I tell them, you know, I was really horrible in math myself. I had 50 cents for every failed math exam. I'd have a total of $6.30, Okay. See, I it. And you heard about the soldier, right, who survived both mustard gas and pepper spray? He's a seasoned veteran now. <laughs> you guys. All right. You got two fish in a tank. One looks at the other and says, hey, how do we drive this thing? All right. See, it never stops me from trying. A gorilla walks into a smoothie bar, orders a small peanut butter and banana smoothie, hands this server $20. She gives him the small smoothie and $1 change. And then she looks at him, and wondering how intelligent he really is, says, uh, you know, we don't have very many gorillas that come in here. He goes, it's no wonder, $19 smoothies. But um bum all right? All right. A cheerful and merry heart is good for more than the personality. It's good for the body. Laughter lowers blood pressure, nephrim, glucose levels, and increases glucose tolerance stimulates circulation, aids muscle relaxation, and releases endorphins. That's all good for the soul. Why is it when we get depressed, that's the last thing we want to do? We don't seek out laughter. We want to be left in our misery. We want to mull over again and again and again and again. Whatever it is, 
that is troubling us as if we're going to find the solution to it. We just continue to focus in on it and it makes us miserable, both within ourselves and, and to be around too. That's what a, a broken spirit does. It dries up the bones. One commentator said a crushed spirit describes a brooding spirit of despondency that always looks on the dark side of things. It flows from a narrow and perverted view centered on the self. It has the effect of drying up the bones. It always looks on the dark side of things and it flows from a narrow and perverted view centered on the self. How many of us have figured out that there are not enough good things that will happen to us in this life? Anybody figured that one out yet? You should. You got to know it. That's just the way this life is going to be. It's all because of the curse. A curse is a curse. If it wasn't a curse, they wouldn't call it a curse. They'd call it a blessing. Right? Right? If that describes you, this, this slow of despond, this perverted view of self-centeredness, you need to have a talk with yourself tonight. Turn to Psalm 42, verse 5. Psalm 42, verse 5. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. This is a real prayer of David. It comes on the heels of one of his very many trials in life. More than likely, this was before he became the king. It happened when he was running from Saul, seeming like forever. You ever have one of those trials like it's going to go on forever? But you know, the truth is, every trial has an end. No trial will ever hit your life and last one second longer than it absolutely must. You've got to keep that in mind. So that when you come into it, you say, like David, why are you cast down, O oh, my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God for your ready help in time of need. Jesus said that I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will always be with you. And even in the, when it seems like, like the, the heavens are locked in silence, he is there, and he's listening, he's watching, he is there, guarding over his own. Because he knows something you don't know, you are being prepared for an eternity. And this is part of the process of being prepared for the eternity. Therefore, when we get disquieted within our soul, when we get all out of shape, when our bones are dry, we need to get perspective again. Perspective. You need to talk with yourself. You guys know of my friend Andre Ludoff. And actually, I, I must tell you that he is the fruit of Dave Zenius's ministry. I know Dave wouldn't want me to say that, but I did, and he can go slash my tires later. <laughs> Through young life, he met Andre at high school, and he 
mentored him and was his tennis instructor. And if I don't have my facts wrong, David, you led him to Christ or were instrumental in that process. Well, Andre is a man now, and he has three, four children. He is a successful real estate broker. And he recently, as you all know, because we've all been praying for him, re hit a really rough patch of life, a real rough patch. It started in December 18th when his daughter, Liberty, ended up in Phoenix Children's Hospital, actually ended up in one of the hospitals here in the West Valley with an internal bleeding issue and they couldn't find out what it was. Finally got her transferred to Phoenix Children's Hospital. And what I would like to read for you right now, in light of what I just shared for you, why are you cast down, oh my soul, hope again in God? That a merry heart is good for a body. And that you don't have to sit around with the dry bone syndrome. In December 26, he wrote me. He said, we aren't sure what the next several days will hold. Now, his daughter has been in the hospital since the 18th by this time and transferred over to Phoenix Children's Hospital. We are pleading with the Lord for mercy and trusting him with the needs for each day. I am keeping Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 close to my heart. Who knows Proverbs 3, 5 by heart? Say it, Dottie. We are pleading with the Lord for mercy and trusting him with the needs for each day. I am keeping Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 close to my heart. Trust the Lord with all of your heart, not into your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all of your ways, and he will direct your paths. Some of us know that so well, we just flip that off and not really pay attention to what it is that we're saying. Andre took it to heart. He said, please keep us in God. prayer as you think of Acknowledge us. Acknowledge him in all of your ways, and he will direct your path. Sustain us. Some of us know that God so well, we just flip that off bleeding. She's only and not really three, pay attention to what it is that we're saying. Andre, you've you got to be worried. He said, please keep us in prayer God. as you think of Acknowledge us. Acknowledge him in all of your ways, and he will direct your path. Sustain us. Some of us know that so well, we just flip that off and not really pay attention to what it is that we're saying. And our death to God be working for deliverance. He said, please keep us in prayer as you think of us. Acknowledge him in all of your ways and he will direct your path. Sustain us. Some of us know that so well, we just flip that off and not really pay attention to what it is that we're saying. And our death to God be working for deliverance. He said, please keep us in prayer as you think of us. Acknowledge him in all of your ways and he will direct your path. Sustain us. Some of us know that so well, we just flip that off and not really pay attention to what it is that we're saying. And our death to God be working for deliverance. He said, please keep us in prayer as you think of us. Acknowledge him in all, all of your ways, and he will direct your path. Sustain us. Some of us know that so well, we just flip that off and not really pay attention to what it is that we're saying. And our death to God be working for deliverance. Prayer, as you think of acknowledge him in all of your ways, and he will direct your path. Sustain us. Some of us know that so well, we just flip that off and not really pay attention to what it is that we're saying. He said, as you think of acknowledge him in all of your ways, and he will direct your path. Sustain us. Some of us know that so well, we just flip that off and not really pay attention to what it is that we're saying. He said, as you think of acknowledge him in all of your ways, and he will direct your path. Sustain us. Some of us know that so well, we just flip that on. And not really the direction that we end up going. February 1st, I sent him a text to encourage him. And in that text, I quoted Corey Ten Boom. Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. 
he wrote me back and said, I love that Corey Ten Boom quote. That's an encouraging truth. Apply our every need and make all grace abound to us. February 2, the very next day. Today's been rough. Liberty has had five bloody stools and has vomited four different times. She only has stomach bile left to vomit up. The doctors are attributing the vomit to the progression of her disease and inflammation in her body. February 3rd. Liberty's colon looked as bad as the last sigmoidoscopy. Sigma, however you say that. We had a meeting with the doctor team and it is clear that as she regresses, it puts her in greater danger for further issues and complications. She was originally scheduled for surgery at 8 a.m. next Thursday. Because of the issues that have come up from the last two cancellations and her current decline, we asked if we could afford to wait until next Thursday. They connected with the main surgeon and they scheduled for her surgery for tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m. We're trusting that this all aligns with the Lord's perfect timing for her. It'll be a four-hour surgery, give or take. Katie and I have been unified through this whole process that we want to give Liberty the best possible opportunity for healing, recovering, and getting home safely. Please pray that he would pour out his abundant grace and mercy unto Liberty and guide the hands of the surgeons for a successful surgery. Please pray that Liberty's body would respond positively and that there would be no negative surprises in regards to the progression of her disease. Finally, please pray that the Lord would give Katie and I his perfect peace. As our minds are stayed please on him that because we trust in him, positively, and that there would be no we long that the Lord's abundant kindness, faithfulness, love, and glory Finally, please pray that would be on full Katie display through this most recent development. As our minds the are reality stayed is that we would have already lost our precious girl if we didn't have the medical resources and intervention that we've had. We are grateful to the Lord that we have the ability to persevere and preserve her life through this means of grace. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. That we have the ability to February 4. Liberty's out of surgery and resting. Surgeon said everything went well. Once the colon was out, it popped off and fell apart, which the surgeon had never seen before. It was basically already dying and an indication of just how sick it was. We now have healing out and recovery in front of us. We are praising the Lord for his perfect timing and loving care for our liberty, faithfully continuing to strengthen and uphold her by the word of his power. She lives and moves and has her being all according to his gracious kindness. Praising the Lord for his Thank you for continuing to carry this burden with us and casting the cares of our family onto the Lord. He is our faithful God. She lives and, and moves then today and has at her noon. being all according to his gracious kindness. Praising the Lord for his Thank you for continuing to carry this burden with us and casting the cares of our <laughs> Thank the Lord more than I can ever begin to express. So many specific answers to prayer. She went from being bedridden to walking completely unassisted. Her blood clots completely <laughs> clear. Thank the Lord more than I can ever begin to.
nine days. She's smiling, laughing, talking, playing, and being her normal self. We are amazed by all of her progress and the Lord's kindness to us. That's my king. That's my God. That's your king. That's your God. What needs do you have tonight? What can you not bring before God that he will not hear? Well, my needs aren't that great. You know, why would he hear me? I'm, you know, I'm kind of a selfish person. And, you know, what I really want is it's nothing in the order of life and death. Is he your God or not? Is he your God or not? Why do you think he says that he can count the hairs on your head and account for them? Because he's got nothing better to do with his time? He's trying to tell you, cast your cares upon me. You are my personal concern. You have not because you, you refuse to pray. You refuse to seek my face. You refuse to surrender and be broken before me. You live, you move, you breathe, you have your being in him. Yes, in this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer because he has overcome this world. He has overcome this world. You know people who are struggling right now. Um, I got a call from my sister right before I got here. Um, it is positive now that she does have lung cancer. She doesn't know what stage it is in, but she informed me if it's at stage two or beyond that, she doesn't want to go through treatment. Her life has been a life of pain, and it has. Serious pain. And I understand that. I don't know what to do, what to think, or how to comfort right at the moment. It's always different when it's your family, you know? But I would know that I want to be just as much of a pastor to her as I am to y'all. So I'm going to pray for my sister. And I know my God can heal her. I know it. I know that she could go, and next time she goes and has an x-ray or an MRI, they could be spot-free. But I'll give my God just as much glory if it's her time to transition from this life to the next. Because then she will really be healed. She will really be ready for the other side. All I want to do is be a faithful comforter and minister to her. We have a foster festival coming up. These kids, 800 of them are going to be graduating out of the system or aging out. They don't graduate, they age out. And they're on their own, basically. I know some organizations have some resources for them and help get direction, but the majority of them are going to end up on the street, homeless, incarcerated, or dead. I remember sitting in Arizona for Children, that office that we meet in, Teresa, and there was uh, some kids from another foster home there, and there was this fifth grade boy, and I could just see the loneliness and the pain and the confusion in his eyes. And I just wanted to pull it out. I couldn't. The Savior suit doesn't fit me. But God help me if I'm indifferent and don't care and don't get on my knees and pray for these children. Who do you know that has needs what are the needs? Here we go. It's 732 for the next 25 minutes. Let's give it to God and let's go before him. And you know what? If this place ends up sounding like a birthing room, fine. 
but we have a true and living God who can do far and above what we could ever dream or expect. Amen? Amen. Let's all stand. And I would ask someone to go ahead and turn the lights down, please. I'd like to sing the Beatitudes to start. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they know their need for God. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Blessed are those who mourn, they will be comforted. The Lord is near to your broken heart. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Like a woman at the well, you will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. Blessed are the Makers, they'll be called his children. And blessed are you when you're reviled and persecuted. Rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven. When the world hates you, remember. Heaven belongs to you. Think of Stephen before he was stoned, gazed into heaven, and he saw Jesus at the right hand of God, our Father. His is the King. I give you do not be afraid I will be with you always to the end of the age peace I give poor in spirit for oh, they know the need for God and the kingdom of heaven belongs to them thank you Jesus these are the words that you gave and everything seems upside down and backwards but you are the God of all glory to put on the human suit to come down and live this life. You know what we're going through. And we trust you with it all. Father, we lift up our prayers to you right now. 
and ask you to prompt them from us. Holy Spirit, help us now. Help us to pray as we should. Your word tells us to call on the Lord while he is near. Call on him while he may be found. Right now, Father, we know that where two or more are gathered, you are here in our midst, and here you may be found. Hear the prayer of your saints. Cause them to cry out to you, Father, in spirit and in truth.
great things for he has done great things for he has done great things for he has done great things bless his the Lord. Father, we give thanks for what you did for Andre and his family. Demonstration to us that the true and living God is still alive, living, breathing, and doing well. We thank you, Father, for their trust in you. We thank you that you anchored them in their faith in Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, for the knowledge of the word of God that they could hold on to and depend upon during their time of need and how it became not only just words, but they came life itself for them. We pray, Father, for a season of rest for them. We pray for a season of blessing. We pray, Father, for health, for liberty. We pray, Father, for their brand new baby, that he too would be um, growing and living in the nurture of the Lord as they love him and bring him up, Lord, and give that family some rest, we pray. Precious, precious rest. And for my sister, Lord, I lift her up and ask you to strengthen her in the inner man. I know my conversations with her, Father, and she is just absolutely fundamentally grounded in the truth that she will be with you. That is her hope. That is what she is counting on. And Father, if it be in your will, if it is your desire, we know you can heal her. We know, Father, that you can remove every, every, every cell of cancer from that body. But if you choose not to, Lord, we give you thanks and praise because you are a good God and that you will see her through, that you will transition her from this life into your holy presence with your holy angels with joy, great, great joy. So, Lord, I pray that you would bless these people. I pray that they would remember now the word that was taught to them tonight. That a merry heart does good like medicine. And why are you cast down, O oh my soul? Hope thou again in God. May they delight themselves in you and in all their ways acknowledge you. And may you, Father, in your faithfulness, direct them in all of their paths. It's in Jesus' precious name and all the believers said, Amen. Amen. God bless you.